everyone, welcome back to another episode of Smitty's Gunsmithing. Today, we're going to be showing you how to, how to do a detail, complete disassembly on a Glock pistol. This particular one's a Glock 21 Generation 4, 45 ACP. And the disassembly I'm about to show you is going to be a full disassembly at the armor's level. It is not recommended to do this for routine maintenance of your Glock pistol. And it's also not recommended to be performed by anyone who is not a gunsmith or a Glock factory certified armor. To begin, you want to make sure your weapon's unloaded, of course. Lock the slide to the rear, no magazine, and the chamber is empty. Release your slide, point the weapon in a safe direction, pull your trigger. You're going to pull right here on your slide release and slightly rotate your, or pull your slide back just a fraction of an inch and you'll feel it release and slide your slide out to the front set the frame aside we're going to start with the slide remove your um, recoil spring assembly remove your barrel take your punch or a glock tool come right here for your striker where that plastic striker sleeve is right here you're going to press down and forward toward the muzzle of the weapon keep your finger over the end of the slide push your end plate off all right set it aside You'll feel this move up. Um, this is your extractor to plant on depressor plunger assembly and spring loaded bearing right here. And this is your um, firing pin striker sleeve. Right. Pull your firing pin out. Pull your extractor depressor plunger out. And when attached to it, it's your spring, um, your spring and your spring loaded bearing. Set those to the side. You're gonna press um, your firing pin block safety, tilt the gun over, and you might have to tap it or might have to gently lift up with your tool, and your extractor should come out. Turn your slide over and tap it. And your firing pin block safety should come out along with the spring. You can get that spring a twist and it'll snap out of place. Okay. And there's really no need to disassemble the firing pin assembly uh, or striker assembly unless you need to replace the firing pin spring or your um, uh, cups right here, spring cups. But to do it, the easiest way I found, I hold the gun with the firing pin sleeve into my fingers right here on my calluses. And I grip the spring with my forefinger and my thumb and compress it towards my hand. You see it releases spring cups I just pull them down out of the way set them to the side and I slowly release the spring spring comes off the front and firing pin comes out the firing pin sleeve to the rear your slide is now completely disassembled okay now we're going to start with a frame first thing you want to do remember all pins push out from left to right you want to take your um, slide lock right here you're going to be compressing this bottom pin right here. Let's see if I can remember what this one's called. It's been a while. Number 28. No, that's the Gen 5 model. Okay, it's one of the pins. Anyway, the Gen 4s have two pins. Gen 5s only have one. But um, this pin retains your lock and block and your um, side lock. So you want to put some pressure on it with your Glock tool. And just lift up on this pin and move it around, wiggle it until you feel that pin release. All right, pull your side lock assembly out. Now you're going to press this top pin out. Now you're going to gently lift up on your lock and block. You see that big pin goes in the bottom, and the small pin goes right there. You can push your pin out at the rear right here that retains your um, trigger housing assembly. And you're just going to lift the trigger housing or entire trigger assembly up and out of the frame. There's really no need to take the mag catch out and the mag catch spring unless you need to reverse it or replace it. Same thing with your slide lock right here and your slide lock spring. There's really no need to take it out unless you need to replace it. But if you do, there's your um, side lock's got a grooved end on it. And that's what you want to make sure it goes to the rear um, when you put it back in or else it will not retain your slide. Okay. And I'll go ahead and show you how to take that out just while we're doing this. 
you want to take and tilt the gun over on either side and compress that slide lock spring all the way down until it releases. And when it releases, you'll know it. And that should just fall out. There we go. And that's how you take it out. You can take a little pick or something and just lift that spring out. It sits in a little channel right there. There's no need to remove it. So when you this is that groove service I was talking about. Oops, I hold on to it. If you notice the front side is flat. The rear has a groove portion right here with a little notch. That goes to the rear of the gun. Put it back in. You just start it back in the hole. And it's going to go up under your spring more than likely. So you want to stop it before it goes under the spring. And just put some pressure on the spring. And push it down. And push your slide lock in. And it'll catch on that little notch on the bottom of it. And it'll retain it. Okay. Take your trigger housing assembly apart. You want to rotate it. Pull your spring out to the rear. There's a notch on the spring right here. And your bar, trigger bar just comes out of that notch. And then this will come out like that. You take your punch right here. And just push your connector out. And now your entire trigger assembly is fully disassembled. I'm going to start the video here. I'm going to go ahead and clean this gun off video. And then I'll start the video back when I get ready to reassemble it and show you guys how to reassemble. Thanks for watching. Alright, I got this gun clean. I'm finished the second half of the video now, which is the reassembly. I'm going to start with the frame first. And we're going to start with our trigger assembly. So you want to put your trigger connector back in your trigger housing. And it rides in that slot right there. And you just push it in. And make sure it bottoms out flush right here. And take your uh, trigger spring. You want to put it with the opening down into that notch right here on the back take your trigger bar a little hole right here in the back of your trigger bar right there slide it into your spring just like that all right things just oriented for a second all right you want it to come back around to the front and you want it to where this leg of this spring is down in the front and up in the back like an S. Okay. We should go that together. Gonna insert that into its spot right there in the rear of the frame. Trigger be down in the front. Put your locking block in. Okay. Now you're gonna take your smaller pin. Push it in. Center it in your frame. Best you can, don't want it to be perfect. I forgot one thing I want to do right quick. I'll look that up with some Hornady one shot. Okay, my favorite uh, lubrication. I don't use it as a gun cleaner, but I never tried it for that, but I use it as my go to lubrication. Alright, so once you got that in place. Put your um, slide stop lever and it goes in between the frame and the trigger right there and you'll see that spring on it indexes with that first pin you put in that's why that pin has to go in first that's why it gives you pressure against your spring once you got that in place put your lock and block pin in from the right to the left and if it don't go in like mine just did, you have to wiggle this slide stop a little bit until it lines up, but that went in like super easy. Alright, and lastly, 
We'll put your rear pin in right here. Okay. Now your frame is complete. Start with our slide. So first thing I need to do, put our spring back on our um, firing pin block safety. Push it in and give it a little twist. And it'll snap in place and it'll retain it. Drop that in your hole right here, spring down. Push it on in there, take your extractor, your round portion of your extractor right here, goes to the rear. You depress this right here and snap your extractor into place just like that. And we'll go ahead and spray it with some one shot before I reassemble it. Okay. Now, you can take your extractor, extractor deplunger, presser, assembly, with your spring loader bearing and spring, push it down in there. Okay. Now we need to put our firing pin assembly back together. The easiest way I found to do this, if you'll notice, we've got a small shank portion right here that's smaller than the rest of it. Well, that's where you want your firing pin cups to rest, is on this smaller portion. And the front of them will index against this raised edge right here. Okay. So you're going to take a firing pin, put it through our firing pin sleeve. All right. I'm going to put that in my hand just like you know I normally would to take it apart, slide our spring over the firing pin from the front, and I'm going to compress that. Okay. And it's going to be a little difficult. But once you get it compressed, just hold it with your fingers. Slide one spring cup over the top and put the other one on the bottom. Now let your spring go forward until it retains both cups. And they're pressed against the um, front right there, just like so. And that's what you want. Never, ever, 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 ever put any oil or grease on your firing pin. I will however use Hornady One Shot because it dries, it's a dry lube so it doesn't attract anything. It doesn't attract dust, dirt, powder residue, and um, lint and everything else to wind up going up your firing pin. Most Glocks I've seen that would not fire somebody oiled or greased this firing pin. I'll put the gun back in here and there was oil and grease in the firing pin channel. And as the gun was carried and it got dust and dirt in it and lint and then powder residue from being fired, all that collected in here. And it wound up gumming up and gunked up so bad that the firing pin couldn't even move. Um, Glock will tell you, never put any oil or grease in the firing pin channel. I will use Hornady One Shot. It's the only thing I will use because it does dry in just a matter of a few minutes. And it doesn't leave anything, any kind of service for anything to attract to now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spray down the entire inside of my slide with Hornady One Shot. I'm going to install the firing pin, push it down, we'll take our end plate right here, stick it in here, a little notch goes toward the top, and you're going to hold that. You've got to compress this um, firing pin sleeve. And then they'll allow it to go up until it touches your extractor depressor plunger on the spring loaded bearing. Then you're going to press that down and push it the rest of the way and release it and allow you to snap it into place. And you'll know when it's all the way because it'll snap all the way up and you won't see a gap right here. And you'll, you'll hear roughly two clicks on that. Now that I got that assembled, I'm going to give them a spring assembly, a little shot of one shot. And I'm going to coat my barrel. Okay. Alright. Make sure I get the feed ramp. Let's put that in place. Put our recoil spring assembly in place. Snap it down to your bottom U-shaped notch right there. In front of your lock and load. Alright. Now at this point, I'm going to give the inside of my frame a quick squirt. Not a lot. Just the imported parts. That way I got some uh, lubrication on my four um, slide lugs there. Now I'm going to spray the outside, the top, 
on the right side, the front and the rear of my slide to one shot. I'm going to show you how to function test this too. Might drop this back out. So, when your gun is in its resting state, your firing pin should not protrude out your breech face. You can see it right there through the firing pin hole. But if even pushing it forward, it should not come out of that hole. Okay. Once you depress the firing pin block safety and then move the firing pin forward, you notice it sticks out the breech face right there. And that's what you want. Okay. So you want to make sure that firing pin block safety is working properly and it should not go forward. Now when I depress it, it should go forward and you can actually hear it when you shake it back and forth you can hear it moving back and forth My firing pin safety is not depressed you barely hear it it can't move very much okay I always check that make sure you get everything back together right and your firing pin block safety is working as it should and that's an important safety feature to make sure the gun does not go off if it's dropped all right there's a symbol with a pistol now we're going to function test it with a symbol so I'm going to press on either side of the trigger without pressing the trigger safety blade in the middle. And that gun should not fire and trigger should not move forward no more than about that much right there. Okay, you can see actually when the safety leaf um, bottoms out against the frame. Okay, now I'm going to release that. I'm going to press the entire trigger with the blade. The trigger should pull to the rear. Everything should feel normal. I'm going to hold it to the rear. Rack the slide. Release it and it reset like it's supposed to. So now I'm gonna pull the trigger again, right the slide, hold it to the rear, and then move it forward to feel the trigger reset. Trigger reset like it's supposed to, pull the trigger, and the gun fires again. So it's passed all the function test. Alright. And that is how you feel the strip. I'm I'm sorry. That's how you detail strip and reassemble. A Glock pistol and this is the Gen 4 model. Gen 5s are just slightly different but nothing major. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.